What's going on YouTube? This is Necro Steve and it's finally time for the week three of the LBA. Now my opponent this week of course is the Los Angeles Nitty Kings and I'll be going up against them. If you haven't checked out my team analysis for this matchup, please go do so. It was a pretty thorough team analysis. There were a lot of things that he could do to make things pretty difficult for me. Now heading right into this battle, I was very, very, very surprised to see that he brought the team that he did. Immediately you notice that Weavile can hit four of his members super effective and do neutral damage to the other one, leaving just Infernape as his real switch in to my Weavile. Furthermore, Rotom really can put in some serious work against this team. I decided to actually go with a Specs Rotom, uh, Life or Weavile, a physically defensive Nidoking, I'm sorry, a physically defensive Venusaur, I was looking at the logo when I said that, a Scarfed Tyrantrum, a more defensive Togekiss, it's like, it's timid with max speed, but it has a lot of HP investment, and then uh, an offensive Donphan. And my reasoning for that was I really wanted to have Ice Shard in the back to help pick off some things. Um, looking at his team right with those six, the biggest threat on his theme, team is really the Gardevoir. If I can put that in range for an Ice Shard KO, then basically any of my Pokemon can clean up. I do need to be cognizant of what uh, item Jirachi has, and I also need to make sure I pay attention to what uh, his Salamence wants to do, whether or not it's Scarfed or not. I was trying to set up a Dragon Dance, anything like that. Uh, granted, with Weavile's Ice Shard and to a lesser extent, Donphan's Ice Shard, not as worried about those issues. Now he decides to lead Gardevoir, which he traces my Sturdy. So at first I was like, well I guess I should set up the rocks. But when I noticed my overall goal of, I just need to weaken his team, I just need to go for Earthquake here. Granted I will really miss rocks in this matchup, considering Infernape and Salamence especially. Uh, he goes for Energy Ball, knocking me down to my own Sturdy, and I just get to do a ton of damage to him with Earthquake. Um, I do notice from this damage that he's probably slightly bulky because of max uh, HP slash max attack Adamant Dawn fans Earthquake does normally about 99%. It can KO some Gardevoir, so uh, he definitely had some bulk there. I just went for Ice Shard. I knew he might switch into Jirachi but I really wanted to force him into that option. Um, this would not only let me see what the item the Jirachi has, I was very relieved to see leftovers on it, but also he would be forced to reveal one of Jirachi's moves. Um, he decides to KO me with Zen Headbutt as I just clicked Stealth Rock. That's fine with me. If he had uh, Stealth Rock himself, then I would have gotten mine up too. Now, Dodfan did a lot of work for me in just those two turns because he provided me with a lot of information on Jirachi since I see leftovers and Zen Headbutt, and also he provided me with fantastic damage on Gardevoir. Now I got into Rotom since I know Rachi is not Scarfed, and since it has leftovers, it's probably bulky. And so I'm just gonna go for a Spec Shadow Ball with which nothing on his team even resists. He brings in Nidoqueen, and that is easily to it KO'd by Shadow Ball. I get a critical hit on the second one, but after seeing the damage from the first, he was not going to live that. And it really I don't think he expected me to be specs. Um, he brings in Jirachi, and I didn't really have a reason to switch out. I really just decided to just keep on going for Shadow Ball. Uh, he decides to go for Zen Headbutt, and I knew that that wouldn't KO me because it looks like he's running something a little bit um, bulkier. Now, he does do half damage to Rotom, which is a bit more damage than I really wanted. But at the same time, I know I'll outspeed, so if he wants to stay in with Jirachi, that's fine by me, really. Uh, I go for Shadow Ball for the third time in a row, or the fourth time, really. And I hit Salamence, and I do over half to Salamence as well. Now, I was really, really thinking, okay, I think he's going to try to set up here, or at the very least, he might just attack. And since the Dragon-type move was really obvious, I just went on Togekiss. Um, of course, he wouldn't go for a Ground-type move because I have Levitators and Togekiss is flying. So, that worked out pretty well. Uh, as he roos up, I tried to paralyze him, but he's actually packing the Lumberry. He probably expected Togekiss to have Thunder Wave, actually. This is such a common set to have Togekiss with, uh, but he does not know that I have Dazzling Gleam, and so I was just going to try to paralyze him again, but I figured, uh, maybe he'll switch out, and I didn't know what he'd switch out into, I was hoping he'd switch out into, uh, hit, um, actually no, at that point in the battle his Nidoking was gone, so there was no point in that, and I'm able to do a lot of damage to him with Dazzling Gleam as he reveals his own Iron Head, 
I was surprised to see Iron Head. I was I was actually more expecting Stone Edge, uh, but Iron Head is definitely more reliable, and since he outspeeds, he has the flinch chance. Togekiss nicely lives the critical hit Iron Head because of my investment on my HP, and I'm able to finish off Guard of War with a dazzling gleam. And that's only because Dom Fan put all that damage on it in the first place. Now, with Gardevoir out of the way, Weavile basically wins this match. It's it's kind of up to me to not choke it away. I can knock off the Jirachi. I can, um, uh, depending on what moves Infernape has, Venusaur walls it or uh, Togekiss walls it. So one of those two is going to wall that Pokemon. Um, expecting Iron Head from Jirachi, I just go out into Rotom hoping that I can take it. And since I forced him into switching again, it's time for yet another Shadow Ball. He decides to take the opportunity to go back on the Salamence. That's really where Rocks would have helped, because those two switch-ins for Salamence, uh, he would have actually probably been dead already or been in very, very low red health. And here I actually decided, well, Rotom, I don't want to give him an opportunity to boost up. You've done a great job, and so I expected him to outspeed and KO my Rotom. But Rotom outspeeds him for some reason. I did not see that coming. And even more surprising, I outspeed Infernape, so I have max speed on Rotom, but Rotom's base speed in his normal form is only 91, so I definitely wasn't expecting to outspeed the base 100 Salamence or uh, base, I think Infernape has base 108 speed. So it was very, very surprising to me to outspeed both of them. And with the added damage on Infernape, now I don't fear anything by going into Tyrantrum, because basically I force him to go, if he tries to just regularly attack, I knock him out. If he goes for Mach Punch, it won't knock me out. I locked myself into Dragon Claw because I didn't think that, if since he's running a little bit more bulky sets it seems, I didn't think that an Earthquake would 2 hit KO Garchomp from where he was, so I really didn't want him to go out into Garchomp and setting up a Substitute or a Swords Dance. And he ends up going on to Jirachi to set up a Substitute, but because Tyrantrum is able to do eh, about 15% with uh, Dragon Claw, that means it's a 3 hit KO from this point. And I really didn't want to risk switching out and him thunder waving something else because I didn't want to deal with those shenanigans. And so by keeping Tyrantrum in here, it forces him to attack me because of course he can't set up the substitute and I'm doing more damage than his leftovers is recovering. So by forcing him into attacking, it stops him from recovering and stops him from putting up a substitute. Unfortunately, he gets the paralysis there, but of course there was a really high chance of paralysis and flinch with the added chance of Serene Grace, which is Jirachi's ability, doubling the chance of that flinch to 60%, I believe. Definitely not a good shot at attacking. Um, and I also, on that second Iron Head, because it was so predictable, I could have gone out into another Pokemon, but again, at that point, he had enough HP to make a substitute, so I just really wanted to keep him honest, that way I could at least break the substitute if he went for it. Uh, but now I can easily bring in Weavile, and go for a knockoff. If he goes out into Garchomp, it's still going to be KO'd. Uh, and even if you weren't KO'd, I could just go for Ice Shard. Um, so that's going to be the end of this battle, a fantastic match against the Los Angeles New Kings. That was actually a pretty straightforward match, not any hacks that actually mattered. Um, so I was quite pleased with that. I, going into this matchup, I really did not think my opponent was going to bring some of the Pokemon he brought, and so I was a bit taken off guard when I saw the team preview screen. And I think that may have been his aim, just to kind of... I think he went for a bulkier, or more powerful Pokemon to kind of overwhelm me with power. But and with Venusaur in the back, I didn't even have to use him. It really didn't end up being an issue. So now we are at 3-0 and o in the league. And we'll be moving into our battle next week against the Chaos Hydreigons. That battle actually might be late or out of order just because of some extinguishing circumstances that my opponent has. But rest assured, we will definitely have that battle at some point. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this upload, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye now.